especially for you, because you've been here four years. How do you handle price? Um, I just I just ask them another question and try to get them away from it without knowing that I'm getting away from it. I try to. Let's do it. So let's say we're on the phone. Um, you called me on the internet. You go through the process, and um, you try to make the appointment. I'm like, listen, I, I'm not coming in unless you give me the absolute best price. That's it. But Sean, you know, I know price is important to you. But, you know, that's one of the easiest things we do here. Um, if I can't get you the absolute best deal, I would never expect you to buy from us. But other than price, what is important to you when you buy your next vehicle? Okay, and how often does that work for you? Um, sometimes it does. Sometimes I say probably 50%. 50%. Okay, yeah. so if it doesn't work, then what do you do? I try another one. Okay, what else do you try? Um, usually um, have you shop somewhere else. Do you have pricing up, you know, you, you have a monthly payment you're trying to... I try to swing people to see what they're wanting to pay versus the price of the car. Okay, um, when I go to me, you have the right idea. You don't have the right protocol. I'm going to make your life a little bit easier, okay? Um, now, for you, when you get somebody on this price, how do you handle it? Like, somebody says, look, I want the best price. Or, Jermaine, or someone else gave me a price, so I'm not coming unless you can beat it to do better. What's your response? Well, not your business, you okay, and then uh, what would you say the percentage of that works? Okay. You have anything? Because I know you're a little bit newer, right? Um, not really. Okay. Um, what would you say? Um, feel felt found. Um, Those work for you? It does a lot of times with a lot of customers. Um, I kind of changed it a little bit. Um, but I feel the same exact way. We live in an age where we're all looking for the best sale. We're all looking for the best deal. We also cut coupons just to save pennies here and there. Uh, we all feel, you know what, a lot of people have felt the same way over the years. Um, you know what they have found, come near John Hinder Honda, they've got the best deal um, possible with just, not only with um, the vehicle that they got, they got the best customer service. Uh, that's really it. How, no, it's okay, don't apologize. How difficult is price for you to overcome? You get stressed out about it? No, just camera stress me out. Ah, no problem, it's okay. Here, I want you to flip this over here. And then I'm going to... So, we're talking about price. We heard from a couple of the coordinators what they do. Here's the reality. Uh, a lot of dealerships struggle with paying those prices. The first thing you got to do is know one thing. It's not that deep. Like, that chicken little, the sky's falling, the sky's not falling. Like, as corny as that sounds, you're either going to sell a vehicle or you're not going to sell a vehicle. That's it. Any other, you know, Honda dealership owns the vehicle for the same exact price that we own the vehicle for here. So if they could sell the vehicle, I'm not saying that we're going to match every ridiculous deal that's out there, but we theoretically can do the same exact thing. Understand that. Price internally should not be an issue. Now, how do you want price to come up? This is actually interesting. Um, you want to instigate price. You want to be the person to bring up price. Okay, you can handle price two different ways. You can handle price either reactively, which is more like, you know, handle as an objection, or you can handle it proactively where it's an expectation. I'm going to repeat that again. I personally would like to have my team, my trainees, you know, deal with price proactively. Don't wait till the end. Like, when's the best time for you to come in? Try to go for the close, and like, ah, I'm not coming in because I can tell you the best price. Then you can still overcome it. You can overcome objections, but it is easier and a little bit more powerful for you all to be able to handle expectations. Do you understand there's a difference between an expectation versus a objection? You guys follow me? Now, for the price thing to make sense, I need to go over two additional things. One, the number that you're uh, speaking to the internet director with before, uh, you're only looking at about 20% of people. Follow me on this. Only 20% of people are solely price motivated. That means they're not going to budge anything. They don't care. If you were on fire, metaphorically speaking, they wouldn't throw water on you unless it was an invoice minus holdback or something crazy like that. It might seem like it's more than that. And the reason why is because when something's challenging or frustrating or whatever, it seems like everybody is like that, but it's not the case. Now, there might be people that start out as price. Now, I'm saying, I'm going to repeat this, only 20% of people are solely price motivated. However, 80, 90, 100% of people might ask you what your best price is. There's a difference of somebody saying that price is important to them or you know, that you know, they want to know what the price is or the you know, competitor. That doesn't mean that they're solely motivated by price. That is the initial thing. That is the instant thing. Does that make sense? To be able to handle this the right way, you gotta, I love what you did 
on the emotional side because you try to you know appeal to the logic with the coupons, clipping them, what have you. You got to understand first what is going on in people's minds. First things first is the economy is you know still difficult. People are losing their jobs, they've lost their jobs, etc. That's a reality. People are you know trying to budget accordingly. They're trying to you know be cautious, not make you know you know silly decisions. Plus, you got to remember this is the second largest purchase that the average American, your Honda client, is going to buy next to a house. And with the current state of the real estate economy, you know, market, this is probably the largest thing you're going to buy for the near future. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that's one major, major factor. Is this such a monumental decision? It's not an ice cream cone. I mean, this is an automobile. It is expensive. And depending on what level of uh, Honda you're buying, you're talking about 30000 plus, right? Now, the second thing is this, as it relates to the pricing, most people don't understand what value is for an automobile. They don't understand what they're getting. You know how they equate value? How much does it cost? That's it. If you think about it, it's kind of crazy. But now, this doesn't apply to the car enthusiasts and the truck buyers. Usually the car enthusiasts and the truck buyers, they know everything from the, you know, from the, the little gadgets, weight distributions, and all that other stuff. But for the average American, right? The average person, they have no idea what the heck is under the hood. So if you turn and you're doing a walk around presentation, you're you know, doing it the right way, and they're like, uh, how much does it cost? That, that's where it dumbs down to. Not that they're dumb, I said that's where it dumbs down to. Now Tim, you've been in the business as long as you have. Is that an accurate statement that I'm, I'm giving? Oh yeah. So now, if somebody doesn't understand the value to this, to that, in the automobile, they're just going right to the price. Do you see what I'm saying? You need to build the value up first. Now, me personally, I am not, not against giving price, you know, over the phone or the internet, but I am way against it doing it first. I do not believe in giving a price to an unqualified prospect because if you give price, a price to an unqualified prospect, you're dropping your gross potential. I don't care what other people say and God bless them, but I'm just telling you from my 14 years doing internet sales and BDC, um, again, if you just blindly you know, shotgun prices. Well, first of all, let's talk about what price are you going to shotgun? Are you going to shotgun a 2G gross deal? No, because what's the point? If they could go to, what are the names of the other dealerships? Jermaine, Lindsay, and some Roush. other people? Roush. Roush. These are, there's four. You are not in Very Columbus. Cool. You are 30 minutes outside of Columbus, Ohio. You've got four dealers in Columbus that are giving crazy prices. So unless this dealership, and I don't even agree with this, but unless this dealership is going to give like invoice deals or nothing gross deals, you can't just shotgun an MSRP. What's the point? You can't just shotgun a, a fifteen hundred dollar deal. Am I right? And that's not what they're yeah. doing. They're shotgunning what invoice prices and, and oh, below. Below, below below back. invoice. So your competitors are doing below invoice. Why would you do that? Why would you turn around and off the bat without even trying? If you could make literally two thousand dollars gross on a car from you know invoice to MSRP, hypothetically speaking, why would you automatically just because they went on the internet? drop down to, to $200 or below. Let me explain this to you. 92% of Americans go online before they step foot into this dealership. Almost every person that walks through that door is an internet customer. So if I, if, uh, if Tim is a customer, and I greet him, also known as up him, at the door, am I gonna say, well, Tim, wait a minute, <laughs> let's not talk, baby, let's not talk. I know, put it on the head, camera real quick, all right? See, Tim's real, all right? So Tim, I, let's get the emotion in his eyes. Tim, I know, basically, because my, what my trainer said, you probably been on the internet, right? Yes, I have. Okay, well, look, <laughs> let's just cover it to the picture right now, right? How about this? I give you the vehicle, $200 under invoice. Well, I need to know a little more about it. Ah, it's $200 below invoice. What do you need to know? Come on, let's do this. What do you think the owner would say at this dealership if somebody walked in the door and you just said, blah, $200 below invoice? Say it. Get her. Get her. Fired. You're fired. Like <laughs> Donald Trump style, right? You're fired. That's it. So if it's not okay to greet a customer and not even shoot, not even turn around and greet them, basically, if you shotgun them an automated email with a price quote, it's like you have a big banner on your door before you walk in. Before you step in here, two hundred dollars below invoice. If that sounds ludicrous, it sounds absurd. It is absurd. We should not do that without qualifying a prospect on the phone. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's what I, I want to articulate right there very passionately is that when you give a shotgun price, and then you know people say, oh, but, but Jermaine's doing it. But Jermaine's doing this, and they're doing that, and they're doing this, and they're doing that, and they're doing this, and they're doing it. I don't care. That's what kills people. 
Dr. Mm -hmm. Cuddy says from uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, circle of influence versus circle of concern. What that means is this. There's two paradigms that, that the average person lives in. Stuff that they worry about, concern. Traffic, the weather, what Jermaine's doing, you know? We can't control certain things, right or wrong. It's hysterical. You guys can check on me. If you uh, Facebook me or go on my Facebook this morning, true story, and I didn't put this in here for this, I literally got there early. I don't know if you know this. Last time I got on an airplane to come here was a couple weeks ago, and you know that the train got canceled. Why? I sat on the airplane, and they said, everybody get off. There's a maintenance problem, and since I fly in and fly on in one day, I would got I would have got here like one o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. So we decided to just to reschedule it. Remember? Yeah. So that's a true story. Mm -hmm. Today I get into F terminal in in Hewitt's Airways, and in my eight years that I've owned this company, I've never in my eight years as the CEO of Dealer Synergy seen the line for the for the security this bad. The line was around, around like horseshoe, like raver, something crazy. It was just like ridiculous. I took a picture and I posted on my Facebook and I even said, this is the, and then I even said the next post, circle of influence versus circle of concern. I could have been like, oh, damn US Airways, damn Philadelphia, or what have you, but I have no control of that. So you know what I did? I posted that just to center myself and balance myself, and I just went to going through emails and being as productive as I can. It's called circle of influence. What do I, what do I, what do I control? My thoughts, behaviors, actions, etc. I can't control what the customer's gonna do. You can't control what the customer's gonna do. You can't control what your competitors are gonna do, good, bad, or ugly, right or wrong. The only thing that you can control is what you're gonna do, your thoughts, your actions, your behaviors, etc. Does that make sense? So now, the way that I wanna deal with price is this. I wanna bring it up. And in the step five of the deal with synergy process, I ask a set of questions, I say, have you ever purchased a vehicle online before? Yes or no? If they say no, okay. Follow-up questions, not a problem. Just so you know, what were you looking to accomplish by going online? If they're a price person, vroom, they guess, uh, duh, I'm looking for the best price. Then you handle it there. If they say, you know, yes, I purchased a vehicle online before, <laughs> what did you like about that, Tim? <laughs> Last time I got the price like that, great. We're gonna do the same thing. Price is the easiest part of, you know, this whole thing here. You know, and then you're gonna go into word track. Here's what we're looking to do. First things first, we need to understand the mathematics of things. And this is gonna set you free. You can't stress yourself out. Fact one, only 20% of people are solely price motivated. That means, okay, that means that the majority of people, if you learn how to use your words, not if you're small, but like use your sales words, if you learn how to use word tracks and rebuttals, etc., you will be able to overcome a lot of that stuff. Does that make sense? Now, on top of that, here's where it gets kind of cool. You only have a 10% closing ratio. The majority of people that you try to get with, you're never gonna get them. Make sense? The majority of people that you actually speak to, you're not gonna ever close them. Now, here's the thing, I want you to look at this. Can you this, can see the board, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is dry erase. Yes. Mm -hmm. I always check this because I did this at a no <laughs> ship. They had a permanent mark on a dry erase thing, and I was like, ah, my bad. So if you turn around and look at this, there's only